Okay, in this project we're going to be using the 555 chip in its monostable mode, also called one-shot mode, uh, which is when we're using it just as a timer. So this uh, begins a timing cycle by momentarily connecting pin 2 to ground, and uh, then it will go for the duration of its timing cycle, which can be set by a capacitor and a resistor. So if you look at the parts that you'll need to build this circuit, uh, you might pause the video now and just make sure you have all of these parts. We'll be referring to this stuff using this schematic. So as is uh, the, rec the technique I've been recommending, we're going to start by going with pin 1 and just walking our way around the chip. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then up the other side, 5, 6, 7, 8, making sure that we make all the connections that we need to that are indicated by the schematic. So uh, pin 1 we see is connected to ground. So the first step would be just to connect pin 1 to the blue rail. Uh, then pin 2 we see is going two different places. One of the places is that it goes through a 10K resistor to power. And the other place that we see that it goes is through a momentary switch. I'm going to move the switch a little bit of a distance from the chip to make it easier for me to hook it up. So once I have these two wires here, I can connect them with this momentary switch, which again is connecting pin 2 when the switch is closed to ground. Next is pin 3, which is our output pin, and this is actually going to be putting current through our relay coil. So I'm going to move that down here, making sure that I have the diode pointing in the right direction. The little black bead is uh, at the in the direction that the current is flowing, and I locate where my coil of my relay is, and I move that to the same row so that when pin 3 goes high, current can go through here and then out the other side to ground. So the other side of my coil is going to ground. So this other diode is here uh, because there's some, uh, through the process of induction, there's, there's the, some, um, sometimes there can be a voltage that'll get stored on one of these pins and it can, we want it to be able to dissipate safely, going in a circle, basically, around that coil to dissipate current. So it looks counterintuitive because both of these diodes are going to the same pin this way, but this is the one that matters to turn our relay on, the one that's going this way. Okay, so now pin three going high will turn on our relay, and we go to pin four, and see that it's connected directly to power. So I'm connecting pin 4 to my red rail. Then on pin 5 I see that it's connected to ground through a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor. And I have one right here that I can use to connect pin 5 to ground. When I look at pin 6 I see that it goes two different places. Uh, one of the places is that it just is jumper to its next door neighbor to pin 7. So I can make a quick jumper here of pin 6, just going to pin 7. And the other place that pin 6 goes is through a 10 microfarad capacitor to ground. I have to make sure, since this thing is polarized, that the negative leg of that is going to ground. And pin 7, I see, is going through a variable resistor that is using two legs of a pot. And I need to if I put it right next to the chip, it's going to have to have one leg bent under. Uh, so I'm going to move that pin 7 up here a little higher away from the chip so I can get access to a pot. So now I can use one of the outer legs and the wiper on this pot to form my variable resistor, which is a 1 mega ohm resistor connecting to the red rail to plus. And then that just leaves pin 8, the last pin on the chip, which is used to power the chip, and that's connected to the red rail to plus. Okay, now let's test this out. If we apply power, and then we momentarily depress this switch that connects pin 2 to ground, I hear a slight click, and then a little bit later another click. So I can tell that this is switching, but I can't really see it because 
the relay doesn't have anything attached to the load of its switches. Um, and if I really wanted to make this a more dramatic demonstration, what I should do is hook up a load to that. So I think I'll connect a LED. So if I attach an LED to the pole and then the normally open throw of my single pole double throw switch on this side, actually it's this double pole double throw because there's another one on this other side. Uh, now when I turn this on, I should be able to test whether the timer is working. And I see that it went on and then off. And if I make the pot, if I rotate the pot to a longer duration, then the timer is for a longer duration. Uh, this can be used, since this relay is rated for AC, for a, a lot of different uh, projects that you might want to have switch on for just a certain duration and then switch off, like a timer should do.